Paul Burgess is the founder of the global telehealth practice, Paul Burgess Functional Medicine, and the owner of Paul Burgess Wellness. With so much conflicting information on the internet today, it's impossible to know what is relevant and what is just hype. In today's episode, we talk about how working with a functional medicine practitioner helps revolutionize how you approach your well-being by knowing the choices that are specifically right for you. Welcome to Lifeology. James, thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this one. I've been doing a lot of these recently. This is one of the ones I've been looking forward to. <laughs> So thanks for having me on. I appreciate that. Hopefully we don't disappoint. <laughs> of course. No, <laughs> now, so you're calling from London. I'm calling from Florida. Very different weather and um, uh, yeah, just very different weather. <laughs> yeah, I think you picked That's the funny. right location. I've got to be honest with you. But <laughs> That's funny. Now, functional medicine practitioners or doctors. I know that's, I've, I've heard a lot of that. I'm sure a lot of my listeners have heard a lot about that probably in the past 10 years or so. It's really gotten a lot more, um, eyes have been, you know, have, have, it's been more popular, popular. What, what is a functional medicine doctor and how is that the same or different from traditional practitioners? So a, a functional medicine practitioner is somebody that's going to look at um, somebody's health issues in its entirety, mm -hmm. but mainly focusing mm -hmm. on what is the root cause. So when you go to a traditional okay. GP, you know, your, your primary care practitioner, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're going to look at your symptoms and treat your symptom. So you've got mm -hmm. high blood pressure, here's a blood pressure tablet. You've got high cholesterol, here's a statin. Mm -hmm. You've got high blood glucose, here's metformin. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's treat those symptoms. The challenge with that is whatever caused the symptoms, the high blood pressure, the high glucose, whatever, that's still going on. And that, is what's mm, a problem sorry. for us in long-term chronic healthcare issues because we have the highest rates of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, um, Alzheimer's, dementia, the highest rates of these that we've ever had in the history of the world. And we're supposed to be the cleverest we've ever been. So clearly there's something mm -hmm. lacking in the healthcare approach when it comes to treating symptoms. Now, nothing against doctors. They are fantastic people. They, their, their heart is in the right place. They're doing what they can with the education they have and the model that they use. I have a company that trains mm -hmm. practitioners and 60% of the new people that come on our course are existing GPs wanting to move oh, okay. from oh. a profession that they feel as though, look, we're not mm -hmm. getting the traction that we want to get. All we're doing is keeping these people mm -hmm. going by giving them meds. We want to fix some underlying causes. Mm -hmm. So the difference really is that we look at the underlying cause. We look at a much, much bigger and in-depth um, health parameters. And um, we tend to get results. When people ask me, what do I do? <clears throat> it's kind of like, well, when people have been to the doctor, they've been to the consultant, they've been to the specialist, mm -hmm. and they can't get the answers, then they come to me. Because we look uh, at it from this other aspect. And we generally find out sure. what's going on. Sure. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it does. I guess the only thing I would add on, because I'm sure someone will, will think this, is so you go through the same you go through the same um, medical training that everyone else does, and then you take a special path which is specifically for the functional medicine. It, it's, it's it's different. It's not the same because oh. when oh, okay. when you when you practice with a GP's license, you are bound by that mm -hmm. license. That license mm, yeah, yeah. means you have to um, practice what they call evidence-based medicine. So therefore, sure, it sure. has to comply with particular research. The research is mm -hmm. very often funded by Big Pharma. So they'll turn around and go, look, yeah, makes sense. this is the research. We've, we've, we've got the research here. You must give these meds for these issues. Yeah, sure. If there is a better natural alternative you can't discuss it as a general practitioner so, because yeah, it's not in your license. Yeah. It's kind of this, so yeah, it's the same thing with me. I have their, multiple clinical it, licenses as well. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, James. It, it just restricts what they can discuss. That was all. Mm -hmm. uh, my viewers and listeners just know, since he's in London and I'm here in Fort Lauderdale, there is like a three second delay. So if we talk over each other, it's just simply because of that. And we're also excited to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. However, so I, like I was saying in my, um, in my, uh, clinical practice i have you know license as well and but i have to adhere to whatever that state licensure that license um 
I have accountability towards that. And so there's yeah. certain things I can do and can't do. Even on my show, there are certain things I can't have on my show because even though my show is self-help and it's not specifically psychology related, but I'm still accountable to that accred accreditation board. And I have to be very careful what I say and what I do as well. So it's the same concept as well. And so I understand yeah. what you're saying as far as how um, primary care doctors have to adhere to certain regulations as well. Yeah. Now you've done a lot of different work. And so one thing I really appreciate is when you looked at the, the the reason, the causality behind something. I remember I used to work in in acute hospital settings and the, we would stabilize the patient. And then, as you said, we would send them back home. And so we may have stabilized the patient, but they're going back into the environment that probably caused a lot of that. And so it's like, we're just stabilizing them. So the same concept with you as well as what it yeah. sounds like. So how do you walk a client through recognizing, let's look at the symptom or the foundation of something? How, what type of questions or what do you do? Well, firstly, it's very different for everybody. And so each individual mm -hmm. is treated as that, as an individual, because no two people are the same, right? Even if you have a twin brother, sure. you're not the same, right? And so we have to deal with that uh, on a on a one-to-one -one basis. However, what I do want to say is that I love the fact that you, you know, your, your uh, psychology uh, license and everything else that we spoke about kind of prior to uh, recording, because mm -hmm. psychology and beliefs are what drives behaviors. Yes. And it's those behaviors that drive your potential health outcomes. People know eat less, exercise more. Like that's nothing new. They know don't eat junk food, eat healthy food. Most people know Mediterranean diet seems to be pretty good for most people. Right. But just because you know something does not mean you adhere to that. And so first we want to look sure. at what's most important right. to you about your health. You know, why is that important? What's the real underlying driver behind your behaviors? And and then we'll find out what that is. Once we know what that is, for example, you know, I, I want to be as healthy as possible because I want to be a great uh, role model to my children. And then the question is, well, why do you want to be a great role model? Well, because I want them mm, to... To delve deeper. To remember that I was here and I, and I want to give them the best I can. I go, well, why do you want to do that? And generally it comes down mm. to the same thing, which is because it's what gives me value. And I have massive imposter syndrome. I do not believe I have any value. And this is the only way I think I can do it. Right. Mm. Once you get to the point where we really find what that driver is for them, pointing them in the right direction and getting to get them to take action down the right path is a lot easier. Because if there's something a little mm. bit difficult mm. for them that gives them a bit of pushback, like mm, you've got to stop eating that ice cream quite as much as that, or you've got to do a little bit more of that exercise that you weren't doing. And we relate it to that real driver. You know, the thing about, I want to have value in this world. They've got more likelihood mm -hmm. of taking action, right? And so therefore they go and do that thing. Yeah. Um, but that's not the root cause of all of their problems because the current behaviors could be what's driving their cholesterol. Right? It could be that they're eating too much certain fat oh, sure. yeah. in their foods, or it could yeah. be that they don't do enough exercise, mm -hmm. or it could be that you know they, they drink too much alcohol, or they smoke, or they this or that, or whatever it is. But it can also be that they've accumulated infections or pathogens or mold or environmental chemicals that have mm -hmm. been absorbed, or you know the stuff that's on the sofa that stops it catching fire. And yeah. you're sitting on it all day and you're absorbing that through your skin. <laughs> There's so much yeah. stuff that we're exposed to, right? So we look at it from all mm -hmm. of those aspects. What are your beliefs behind your behaviors? How are you going to change these things? And we do that with you. Um, what is it that's created your current scenario? It could have been that you've had this thing 20 years. You know, when you lived at home with your parents, there was sure. damp in the basement. You lived in a, um, a, a bedroom that was above the basement. You had mold you inhaled it, it stayed with you, you've got mm. all these other issues. You know, there's a huge amount of stuff that can be done. Um, and and that's how we look at things in, a, in the entirety. So when I work with a patient, it's for it's generally for 12 months and we and we tackle everything. Oh, wow. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah. the real I love thing, how comprehensive that is. Yeah. The, the real mm. thing that we're trying to give people, uh, it took me decades to summarize this, but the real thing is we want to give you certainty that what you're doing for your own health is the right thing for you. And what I mean by that, it's like, okay, a lot of people yes. have the same questions every day. What's the best diet for me? Like, do I need to take supplements? Mm -hmm. If I do, which supplements? 
How much do I need to take? Why can't I sleep? What's the fix for that? Why is my energy so low? Why is yeah. it I feel like I'm losing ground in in the work race? Or you know, what is it that this is? What? How do I fix this stuff? Oh, I'll go online, and I'll find that answer. And that is probably the worst thing you can do, because once you type in mm, yeah. more energy, you will get answers of all different descriptions. Okay, once you type in what's the best <laughs> diet well. for me, right? what's the best diet for me? Yeah, this man says you've got to be carnivore. If you're not carnivore, if you eat a vegetable, you will die. And here's all the marketing, and it mm. makes it look lovely, and it's, it's compelling. And these stories from these people about yes, this is the way forward. And then at the very same time, you've got someone saying vegan is the only way. If you eat meat, you'll get cancer. Yeah. And then the next person says, well, if it fits your macros. Yeah. And it says something else and something else. Or you look at a particular product someone's trying to sell, like, you know, oh, random aloe vera juice. I don't know, right? Something like that. You go, this will mm-hmm. cure yeah, all yeah, your sure. ills. This is the thing you have to take. Mm-hmm. Please remember this. Anyone listening, viewing this, please, please, please remember this. No one online knows your age, your height, your weight, Mm -hmm. your liver Mm -hmm. function, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your sleep pattern, your stress, your accumulated pathogens, your historic diseases, your vaccination. They know nothing about you, right? They're giving generic advice. So there's no way it can relate specifically to you. View it as entertainment. And that's an interesting piece of information. But don't then go and buy the <laughs> yeah. product based on the fact you think it's going to fix you. Not unless they've spoken to you mm. individually, because that's clearly what we do, yeah. right? We go, yeah. let's have a very comprehensive consultation, do some really deep blood tests, toxicity tests, all that kind of stuff. Know you inside out, then we can give you the exact information that's right for you. Clarity that what you're doing for your health is the right thing for you. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, that's, that's, that's brilliant. I, you know, I, I've done a couple of shows with different personal trainers. That's one thing I really talk about is uh, how to really develop your own healthy lifestyle. What type of exercise is specific for you? So for example, my, my day is very different than someone who maybe has a whole bunch, a lot of kids and has a just different work, work in general. But for me, I know specifically what that looks like. And so my lifestyle is going to be different. My exercise is going to be different. My body type is different. And so really looking at how to create your lifestyle, you know, sometimes we see so many, um, Speaking of health and wellness, we see so many of these Instagram fitness models like, oh, I want to look like that. Well, a lot of them do that for a living, for one, and they spend a lot of time and energy in that gym where someone else who perhaps has you know, a full time job and all these other responsibilities, they may not be able to get to the gym as much. And so is that a realistic goal? And so you really want to be mindful of it, just as you said, what how, what do I bring to the table or what is my lifestyle like? What are my choices that I make and where can something like this fit in? So I'm really glad to hear that you do work Absolutely. with them so comprehensively. And especially and, for and, a year as well. I, I can yeah. see that there's probably a lot of changes that people have had. And, and James, you, you've hit the nail on the head with that Instagram thing, right? Because people will look at those aspirational images and think, well, that's mm-hmm. what I want. So just so you know, people listening, yeah. see the people that are showing you those pictures. 100% are filtered or photoshopped, right? We know that there's a lot of that. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> right, it, it does. It, yes. It, so this true. is not new, right? This was happening <laughs> in the true. magazines way before mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah. I'm way older than you. So I remember the 60s and 70s and the magazines and the and they were all photoshopped as well, right? And so yeah. that was before we had technology that you can now do that on your phone. But moreover, many people that are in the gym then look lean and full in their muscle, be it male or female, that's a very, very small percentage of genetic people that can do that. So you can yeah. train your butt off and eat very little and you know really try and get yourself into that shape. But to do that is in opposition to your health because you need to take your body to a place mm-hmm. it doesn't really want to go. And it's not sustainable. So you get to this low body fat percentage. Yeah, that's the key. Just... And then you have to put mm-hmm. it all back on again. So psychology... From a psychology yeah. perspective, very damaging, right? Because when you're, if you, if you, if you manage to get yourself to that very lean state, immediately that goes. You you start going, oh, I'm fat, or I've got issues now, and then mm-hmm. and then food becomes a problem, and you get all these issues because you were following an image that someone was putting out there yeah. who wasn't having those problems because genetically it suited them. Right? I've trained. Right. 
um, and I've coached uh, European, British, European, and world champions in bodybuilding and women's figure. Oh. So I know what it's like to get there. And I also know that the people that get there, they pretty much look like that anyway. But yeah, once they true. put it in some effort, true, yeah. they do, right? Once they mm. put in some effort and they've got the, you, can, you need someone with genetics, work ethic. When you've got both of those, then they can really look astonishing and they can win world champions, world championships. But they will walk around with a six pack and a low body fat percentage anyway. That's just the way they're built. Once yeah. they put some effort in, they can make it look exceptional. If you don't yeah. walk around like that normally, assuming that you're well and you're eating well, normal, you know, a, a good diet, then it's likely you're going to have to push yourself to a place it doesn't want to go. And therefore, that's not sustainable and therefore it's not going to be great for mm -hmm. you. So aspiring to be somebody like the image you see, I don't think is the right goal. Aspire to be the best you you can be so that you're enthusiastic, you're energy driven, you're creative, you're passionate, you're loving life, and you've got joy in life. With mm, that, definitely. you'll tend to find that you're healthier and happier. And yes. happy, healthy people tend to be leaner and tend to be kind of the shape they want to be. You said something, well, said many things that were very relevant and specific, and but I want to focus on the sustainability. I think that is something that a lot of people forget or don't really think through when they start something new. Um, there's some people who do like uh, the bulking season and then getting the, the cutting season. And I always think, well, why can't I live my life like this all the time? And so it's a sustainability component of what that looks like. And I think often people, like you said, they, their reason for wanting a, a different lifestyle or wanting to look a certain way, it's it's not based on sustainability. You know, if I want to look a certain way for the beach, okay. But if I can't go to the beach, then what? And so it's having that intrinsic motivation and desire to make that change. And so when you talk with your, your patients, how do you help them look at the, sustain, the, the sustainability factor so that after they're, perhaps they don't work with you any longer after that year, that they're able to sustain this? So the goal that we have is that we set up the lifestyle specific okay. to them Right, so we've dealt with your health issues. We've cleared out some of the historic, you know, infections and molds and heavy metals and mm -hmm. viruses and whatever it is. So we've got you in a very good place now. We've yeah. taught you how to eat properly for your genetics, right? For your mm -hmm. body type. We've taught you how to avoid toxins. You know, probably changed your cookware. We've definitely changed your cosmetics and your deodorants and things like that because we know that they're full of toxicity that we're just yeah. accumulating all the time. We've made sure that we know what's the best type of training for you and your goals. So like you say, James, right, which is very relevant, well, why can't I just look in good shape and lean all year round? And you can, so long as that is in line with your lifestyle. Like you said, you've got a lifestyle that allows you to do a little bit more of the exercise. If we've got a hard charging entrepreneur who's working long hours and having meetings and all the rest of it, getting into the gym an hour, two hours a day is probably not for them, but they can do very effective compound movements or, or, or particular types of training that just gives them functionality and long-term muscle growth and uh, bone density and you know the ability to keep functioning well they can still get out of a chair at 60 years old or run yeah. you know i've got we were talking about florida right where you are i've got a great patient down there been with me three years he keeps wanting to do more and more and great 74 years old 74 years old testosterone levels of a 25 year old and something like uh, and forgive me if this is wrong but something like 12.5% body fat, 80% muscle mass, best shape he's wow. ever been in at 74. And he runs five restaurants. You know, he's got a big oh business God. down wow. there. And so, but we work it in, right? We make sure that we know how it, how to support him in all of the areas. And he doesn't really, I shouldn't say this, right? But he doesn't really need to work with us now, but he loves yeah. the support that he gets. He loves the tweaking mm -hmm. of things and doing all the chat, you know, the, the, the things that come up with his travel, how do we get across the jet lag better? What else can we do to improve things? So the sustainability afterwards is that you're so set with all of the things that work for you, 
that you can just continue to do those things. Now, think about how much of our mental capacity is taken up every day by what's the best diet for me? What should I eat? Do I need to take supplements? How's, why is my sleep so rubbish? Do I need this particular pillow? Should I eat this particular product? You know, we're like all day that's churning around. Once that's taken away because we've dealt with all of that and given you the formula that's going to fix you or get you in that optimal state, you've got all this capacity now to go and enjoy life again. And that is the key. Really matters. A hundred percent, right? Not the stuff that doesn't matter, like that person on Instagram looks like that, and that's how I need to be because that's going to make me happy. Well, that's not actually going to make you happy at all. It's going to make you sad and miserable and have a food issue, but that's a, <laughs> another conversation, right? But yeah. but the fact is that if you've got the, the capacity to go and look for things that make you happy every day, then all you're doing is looking for things that make you happy. My, I've got a five-year-old daughter. I've got four kids. The oldest is 30, youngest is five. So been busy. But my five-year-old, who is the only one that still lives at home, because um, we can't get rid of her at that age. I don't know why. But anyway, the only one that still lives at home, I, I started saying to her around three years old, said every day, at the end of the day, she's going to bed, and I say, well, what were the three things that made you happy today? So she'd think mm. back. And she'd go, oh, I did this, and we went to the playground, or I had this, whatever, right? Great, okay. And as she got a little bit older, because she was a bit young at the time, I transitioned it to, today you've got to go and look for three things that are going to make you happy. Yeah. And so she starts the day with that perspective. I'm looking for the happy things, the good things. Not, oh, I've got this problem, this stress, this other thing. It's like I'm looking proactively for the things that make me happy. And if we've got capacity, you know, because we're not thinking about the other stuff, about the food and what's the training and trying to look after ourselves. If that's all taken care of, we've now got this thing that we can look for the happy things. That's yes. that's the joy of life, right? That gives us the, the thing that's really worth living for. That's so funny you say that. I often tell my, my patients as well, the, your goal is to look for five things, so five blessings per day. And like I've done that for years. In fact, on my phone, I have a, a running list of years of things that have, that have happened to me every single day. And so if I'm struggling, I can reflect back on, okay, well, on this day, this happened. And on this day, this happened. And so it creates this reminder of just because I feel a certain way right now, doesn't mean that's how it's always going to be. In psychology, we call that emotional forecasting. You take an, a snapshot of how you feel right now. And you project it to the future and say, this is how I'm always going to be. This is, how, this is how life is going to be. And that's not true. So when I have data to look back on and reflect on that, like actually life wasn't that bad and it's not going to be bad again. So I'm so glad that you teach that as well. Unfortunately, uh, Paul, our time is up. Uh, we literally flew through this <laughs> flew through this, <laughs> this interview. If my viewers and listeners want to find out more information about you to work with you, and just because you're in the UK does not mean you, you cannot work with people in the United States, where will they find all this information online? So uh, we have patients all around the world and I've got a lot of people in the USA, so we've got no problem dealing with them there. Um, go to the website, which is paulburgess.uk. Um, and that's Paul, as you'd expect, P-A-U-L and then Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S for sugar, dot UK. And um, you can find out all about me and, and the team. But also there's a big button on the homepage that says book a complimentary call. And what we really want are people to book the calls it's free of charge and talk to us about the health concerns that they have if you book via this uh this, this podcast you will speak to me personally and mm. we will talk about what the concerns you've got and if we can't do any work with you we will definitely point you in the right direction and it's something that is so useful for people because most people are really confused when they've had this long-term problem that the doctors haven't been able to fix or they've got these energy issues or whatever it is and we are here saying come and talk to us and if we can point you in the right direction we will if we work with us great if not no harm no foul we will definitely help you out somehow so please 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 book yourself in for a call like we say it's free of charge and um and i'd love to see you and and chat more Wonderful. My viewers and listeners also know that if I can't find this information any other place, simply go to the show notes at jamesmillerlifology.com and I'll link with Paul Burgess and I'll have that link there as well. Paul, thank you so much. I really appreciated this call today. My pleasure.